All right. Hello and welcome, everybody. I'm here with Benoit from the Unity team, working on the, the Unity UI team specifically. And today they're having the Unity Dev Blitz Days. I found out about this yesterday, got really excited and asked if anybody from the team would hop on and just talk a little bit about it and talk about what's going on with the UI because I'm a little bit outdated on the UI stuff myself personally. And I, I'd like to find out a little bit more and uh, give everybody an opportunity to say hi and learn a little bit more about what's going on from you. So welcome and thank you for joining me. I'm really excited about this. Thank you so much for the invite. Super happy to be here. Uh, so yes, my name is Benoit. I'm a product manager at Unity and I work with the, the entire UI group, which is mostly located in Montreal. We have a few folks in Toronto and on the West Coast. Uh, but yeah, so super smart, you know, team of people, very passionate about what they do. And uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Hey, so you guys, yeah, you've got a lot going on with the, the different UIs and the editor UI. Are you are you in charge of the editor or product manager for the editor UI too, or is it all just the game UI? Can you explain that a little bit? Yes, yes. So the, the group, uh, the entire group is mostly responsible for all, all UI related technology. So as you may know, we have a few, it's a problem and we're working on it, a few UI technologies with which uh, we want to consolidate with the uh, UI toolkit, with, which also extends to text, all the text technologies, uh, localization. Uh, and you're right. So it's about all the, um, all the, the features and technologies for making runtime UI for games and apps and all kinds of interactive experiences, but also for the editor itself. So when we talk about you know edit, making editor extensions, create custom tools, custom inspectors, uh, and all of that. So it's a kind of broad, broad topic, broad area. Uh, we try to cover uh, all of that. Okay, so covering all kinds of different things. So hopefully, if there are questions, they could be about any of those different types of things. Um, on the question, so you guys are doing the Dev Blitz Days. Can you explain what the Dev Blitz Days is a little bit? I've linked in the description um, the link to the forum post that I'm sure you'll mention. Can you just tell everybody what it is so they can figure out how to get whatever the info is that they want to find if they don't get it in this couple minutes that we're talking? Yes, absolutely. So uh, it's a, essentially it's an entire day that we dedicate so for a given team working on a, on a specific area or feature set. So today is about UI. So the, the whole UI group is uh, spending the entire day, you know, engaging with the community. Um, there is a dedicated section on the forum and uh, Reddit uh, Unity channel where people can just, you know, ask questions, share feedback, uh, and we're here to respond to that uh, live uh, and try to be, you know, very candid and transparent about uh, everything we do, uh, provide as much information as we want. Because, you know, lately it feels like, well, two things, right? It, since COVID and since we need to grow, it's easy for us to kind of uh, uh, being lost in our day-to-day -day routine and forget, you know, the most important thing, which is, you know, listen to the user, listen to what they say, uh, you know, learn about what they need in order to make better games more efficiently. So uh, we want to, you know, we want to be there for them and try to do that more and more, you know, on a more frequent basis. Uh, and there's a turmoil lately around, you know, Unity has been a bunch of stuff in the news. So we want to make sure that, you know, we we go back to our roots and, you know, we get that kind of relationship that I think it's very unique at Unity. Uh, when I joined, you know, almost five years ago, we're so close to the users and community. Uh, and, and we miss that, you know, not having as much Unite and GDC during COVID. That the kind of strong relationship we have between developers and uh, and users. So we want to bring that back. So uh, it's the first time we do this uh, with UI, hopefully we're going to repeat the, the activity with uh, other teams, but I uh, hope this stays because uh, it's, it's been very fun so far. Yeah, I think it would be definitely great to expand and keep doing it with other teams. So I think that as long as people know about it, they're really going to be excited to get in there and get the opportunity to, to talk to developers. I mean, I mean, in my experience, it's been relatively easy to get somebody from a team to reply, even you know, long ago right on the forums. And if there was something specific to a team, there was usually somebody on the team that would reply, but being able to get like everybody and get all of the questions all in one day and get a lot of really fast feedback and having that focus, I think is, is going to be super cool. And um, I, I'm excited about all the in-person stuff that's coming through. I got to talk to um, John, the CEO a couple days ago, mm -hmm. and he was mentioning the, uh, some of the new stuff that's coming. I don't want to spoil it, but it, it sounded, I, I'm excited that, those things are kind of coming back into the world because I found them really valuable, learned a lot and made a lot of friends and had a lot of fun at those. So it's awesome. Um, I guess on to some UI 
technically stuff. I, I'm a little bit curious, where do you see the the current UI or the old UI system and the new UI system and that transition? And um, do you think that there's any reason that people shouldn't transition yet? Or is there like a, a, a set of people that should be always using one UI versus the other? Or is it just like you guys think everything is now production ready, jump on to the new UI for you know, like your default? Mm -hmm. No, it's a, that's a great question. And that, that's that been coming up quite a lot uh, in, the, in the past months, but also during uh, this, you know, this Blitz Day uh, event, people are trying to figure out what's, uh, what should they use, right? What, where should they invest their time? Um, which is a very valid question. Uh, so our, our positioning right now is uh, we're still in, tra in this transition, right, of making sure your vital kit meets the needs for ed either making editor tools or making runtime experiences. Um, and we're, as we are approaching that goal, we, we, we acknowledge we're still not there yet. Uh, so that's why in general terms, especially for runtime, I say you want to you make a game, you need UI. Uh, the basic recommendation is keep using UGUI. It does everything, right? It has its quirks, problems. We all know about them, but they're known, right? So you know how to navigate around. There's a lot of examples, learning material, or community um, people are willing to assist you there. So it, it works, it's there, and it's supportive. I think that's the main message is we're not gonna, you know, remove everything from the product before we have a replacing solution. We learn <laughs> from the past mistakes. So UGUE and IMUE will stay as long as needed until, you know, we confident that you're confident that UI toolkit uh, can replace it. So they're there. Uh, but I mean, since we released UI toolkit with uh, runtime support in 2021, uh, there's still a, a lot of use cases where it can be uh, very, uh, very beneficial to use because it, it's great at making highly adaptable um, UI. Uh, but, but the way it's structured, you know, around UI assets and it's, you know, it's inspired a lot by web technologies of so using UXML to describe your UI and style sheets uh, like CSS to define your layout and, and styling. It's very easy to collaborate. So if you have a, a huge team and you need to produce a lot of UI, it's very efficient that way. But it's missing a lot of some features that people will, for their project, will, you know, think they're necessary, like world space UI or custom shaders. That's not available yet. But if you're doing something simpler in terms of um, from style, on, from an artistic uh, direction, it's, gonna, it's going to work just fine. I found that it's, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but in my experience, a lot easier to use for doing. Um, so a lot of the non-game applications too. So I've done a big mix of games and like, you know, industrial types of applications and business apps that are running in Unity. And I find that um, the frameworks like the UI toolkit make it a lot easier to do that kind of stuff where working in UGUI, that's that's kind of like UGUI's weakness, I think, is doing those like you want to do some forms and some sheets and a lot of presenting a lot of data in a way that you would in a standard application is difficult with UGUI. So it's kind of I guess it's now you're going to combine them together and get, get the best of both, right? <laughs> no, you're perfectly right. I mean, uh, you've seen a lot of use cases of type of games, no sports manager or uh, a simulation game or a builder game where you have tons of UI lists, tables, uh, that this is a perfect use case. It handles that kind of UI very, very well. I, I guess it's, it's come from its root, right? We initially build UI toolkit. It was named UI Elements back in the day uh, for creating editor UI. So it's more of an application when you think about it. So uh, it's an obvious choice when you're, you're going to make that kind of UI. And you can use it for both, right? Uh, we made sure that UI toolkit can work alongside UGUI. So for maybe for some menus, you want to use UI toolkit or some HUD elements that are more fancier, richer in terms of visual effects, you want to stick to UGUI. Uh, or if you're transitioning a project from one to the other, or just experiment in, a, in an existing project, you're allowed to do that. Yeah, that's actually got me kind of inspired. I was working on a... Um a space station game that's got a UI with a, a large set of data. Literally like last night I was looking at it and I was like, how am I going to set this up? This is going to be kind of a nightmare because I want to do like these rows and tons of data and be able to see it all and have it be responsive. Um, if I just put them in side by side, I'm going to give that a try and just pop it in, pop it in there and see um, it'll be, it'll be a great, 
I think yeah, it would be a great experience for me. Good exposure and a perfect use case because like, I got lots of data. That I want to change like at least once a second. I want it constantly updating mm -hmm. and refreshing, showing me what's going on with each one and where I can get the, the best deal. So got to. Yeah, I'm going to try that out. That's exciting. I didn't realize Just I could do that. Tell me how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely will. I'll probably make a video about it and share it too. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I know I don't have you for too long. I wanted to check and see, are there any like big things coming or big questions that have been coming up that you think a lot of people would like to know about or like like core things that are coming out of this dev blitz that you think are interesting themes that people should know? Well, like I mentioned, like I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, again, the uh, why use UI toolkit. I, we're, we're, we're not, you know, we're not salespeople. We don't we don't force technologies or features on people. We're like, try it out. Uh, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, let us know why. Um, <laughs> and, and just 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 share your feedback. Right, go on the public roadmap. Uh, vote for any 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 features you would like to see uh, us working on next. Uh, if you see anything missing, please submit you know, new ideas and new feature requirements. We're uh, more than we really want to hear about uh, you know, what you want to see in the product. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, it's there. It's available. It does a lot of things. Um, but we're, we're, we're still working at reaching clarity. And we know it's like people are, are asking, well, why is it taking so long? And like you said, we, we're doing editor UI. We're doing runtime UI. Uh, we wish we could do if we if we had a magic wand and I can you know release everything tomorrow, God knows I would, but uh, it's, it's not what it is. But uh, yeah, be patient, please be patient, and uh, yeah, always but always reach out if you need anything. You guys are cross-platform with all this stuff too, right? Does the UI toolkit work everywhere? Are there any limitations on that right now? Other than you said, works, uh, UI right? was the only one. Well, yeah, exactly. So it's going to work, of course, desktop, mobile, and everything. But when, if you want to make an, uh, an AR or VR game with World Space Wise, obviously you're, you're out of luck. Uh, well, you, you, you can achieve it, you know, with some workarounds, render textures, and but it's going to be a great experience or performant experience. So we not recommend it. Um, well, of all the rest, all the supported platforms, UI could it should, uh, should work as expected. Nice. Cool. Well, I'm looking through. I'm trying to think if I had any other questions about the the UI toolkit stuff. Um, oh, well, I mean, go, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. I just want to talk about maybe. Uh, so, uh, what are um, our plans for the year? Because people have been asking. So, again, why I'm why why don't I have uh, World Space UI custom shaders yet? And just think about people ask about why do are you doing things in a certain, or, a certain orders, why are prioritizing that way? Uh, and I guess we want to go back to our, again, our origin. When we started making a UI toolkit, it was to create editor UI. So people started investing a lot into that. Uh, and the first question we were asking is, when are you going to make you know, this available at runtime? Because I want to use this to make change in apps as well. So we were kind of initially kind of anxious to so we should we kind of finish our story, but we want to get out there and get some early feedback about you know what would be the, the requirements and how that features would work and behave at runtime. And now it feels like we kind of lost track of the editor story. So that's that's been a big focus for us during 2022. Uh, make sure that UI toolkit can be recommended for making UI for the editor, right? So we can we can set we want a point in time when we can say we can stop thinking about I am UI, right? And you can use your UI toolkit for making editors, windows, corporate property drawers, and, and whatnot. So this is what we've been focusing during 2022. Um, that's why people told people are a bit disappointed that you know we, we have not made a lot of progress during runtime. But the flip side of that is since since it's finally a single solution that works on both sides, every most of what we do in, in editor will work at runtime. If we introduce a preview now in your UI toolkit. We make sure it runs. It works at runtime. So if you want to do a complex table view, you have it, right? Uh, if you make a vector drawing API, it works at runtime as well. Uh, so that's all available for both. And, you know, what we're working on right now is data binding. So again, feature that can be super helpful when making editor tools and at runtime as well. So it creates much better <laughs> workflows. You have, you know, and you accelerate uh, at how fast you can create UI. So I think it's a uh, it's going to be a game changer for for UI toolkit. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. That's like the main thing that 
I need is being able to just bind stuff up to an element, make it nice and simple, not have to write that code every time myself. I think it's funny that you went into editor stuff though, because that's where my head was going. That was the, the thing that I was trying to remember that I wanted to ask you about was where it was with the, uh, the editor tooling. Cause I was again, just looking into writing a bunch of editor tooling and I was like, I wonder where it's at. Like, I'm not sure. You know, if it's more focused now on the in-game stuff or the editor thing. So that actually clarifies a lot because I remember you started off with editor tooling and then it became this all-in-one thing and I was a little bit confused on what what that meant for the editor tooling part, if the editor tooling was just done and now it's going over to this thing. But that sounds like you're going to refocus on that and then all those things, especially finding that's going to be great. Getting it in both of those is, is going to be awesome. So. Uh, I'm excited. That that's really cool. I'm gonna have to dive in and uh, spend some time with that. Maybe this this weekend or, or next week. I, I probably shouldn't do it this weekend. My wife get mad. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'll dive into it next week I, and have a lot of fun with that. I'm I'm super excited about that. Well, um, I don't want to take up your whole time. I know we only had a few minutes. Um, I wanted to please ask everybody to hit the thumbs up button. Say thank you to Benoit for coming out. This is amazing and really fun and i'm excited that you guys are doing this and also check out the link in the description for the dev days you can go ask them questions on the forums or in uh on reddit they're answering questions there all day i think you got a couple hours left throughout the day so just jump over there start asking away or your question may have already been asked and answered multiple times just go check search through the threads all right thanks again everybody and thank you benoit i really appreciate this this is awesome. a blast take care Bye -bye.